Hey family, Ace Alexander here to welcome you to Summer at the City, which means Purposeful Pause is in full effect. We pause to take time to rest in God's goodness and to give our time to love on God's people. Speaking of, shout out to everyone who joined us for our Purposeful Practice, where we have the opportunity to build affordable homes with Habitat for Humanity or serving hot meals and wash up, washing clothes for those in need at Westport Showers. When the city comes together to love on Kansas City, we're making sure that our community is experiencing God's love firsthand. Now with that said, let's get into worship. Questions rise, but in you I'm found. Surrender all to your will. And while you work, Lord, I'll be still. Cause miracles, signs and wonders are in this room. Signs and wonder 
In you I find my joy In you I find my healing Restoration Whatever you need You can find it In Jesus Whatever Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Purposeful Pause. Uh, I pray that you guys are enjoying it um, this far, that you're leaning in, you're actually participating, whether you are watching before you go to the outreach or you have completed the outreach and you are watching this after you've served the city of Kansas City. I just want to tell you as your pastor how proud I am of you deeply, sincerely. I'm proud of you, proud that you are living the best way you can in serving Jesus and showing others the love of God and being the hands and feet of our Lord and Savior in the most beautiful city in the world. Yes, I'm biased, Kansas City, Missouri. So I wanted to come to you um, today on this this weekend before we get into everything else. I wanted to come and uh, just take care of a little house business. Um, no, we're not meeting in person. No, obviously, no one's at the gym theater. If you showed up to the gym theater, that's on you. We've been announcing it for two months. And I told you I was going to announce it until you got tired of hearing it. So I feel sorry for you. God bless you. If you showed up at the gym theater, nobody was there. We we're all online. And we still uh, want to make sure that we are taking care of the house. Pastor, how do we do that? Well, there's several ways you can do that. Number one is through attendance, whether online or in purpose. Uh, there's also prayer, obviously, lifting up your church before the Lord and um, just laying before him causes and um, our um, pursuits and leaders, volunteers, myself, Lady J, my family. Um, I'm always appreciative of your prayers. So attendance, online and purpose prayers. And last but not least, your generosity. Man, you guys know what season we're in. We're in an exciting season, but it's also a crucial season, right? Um, at the same time, we're meeting at the gym and God is saving and God is moving and he's speaking to us through his word. We're also involved in a renovation pro project of our own campus, right? Our own property. We're involved in that renovation and uh, your generosity is what keeps that moving along right it's moving slow and steady I told you guys I'm in no rush I'm moving at the speed of God we want to make sure that we um, are doing everything we can to make sure we are furnishing and we're renovating a house for hearts right so it's not necessarily about a facility the facility is going to be beautiful it's going to be beautiful a lot of state-of-the-art um things in it and components and all that stuff but ultimately we want a house for hearts we want to be able to house the hearts that god is sending and that god is going to use his gospel through the expression of city of truth church to change their lives and so we want to make space we want to make room if you will for the people that god wants to send to heal save deliver and set free it's not about chairs but hearts need a place to sit. <laughs> it's not about children's facilities, but there are little hearts and special hearts that need a place to hear about Jesus at their level. You see where I'm going with this? That your generosity is not about a thing, it's about a person. That each dollar you give helps us to reach a person. Not only helps us to reach people, but it helps us to continue to fuel the ministry. I myself am a part of pay staff we've got several pay staff and you guys are generous and we're able to take care of what we need to take care of so we want to continue that today whether we're in person or not we want to continue that today and i want to say thank you in advance there's several ways you can give you might have already seen them as i've been talking but you can give via cash app using the cash tag the city kc or you can text to give by texting the keyword the city kc to the number 77977. You can even go to our website, thecitykc.com. You can click on the Give tab there. You can give via our app or even Venmo. I mean, you can mail something in if you want to. There are several, I say several, I mean several um, ways you can give. Listen, again, I want to thank you in advance 
for your generosity. And know, like the five heartbeats say, a heart is a house for love. No, we want to make sure that we're building a facility, not because we want to say we have a facility. We want to make room for hearts that God wants to send into the house. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. God bless every giver. Bless every person who has the heart to give and initiated giving. Father, I pray that you would bless their lives richly, however you want to do it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Listen, God bless you. I cannot wait to see you on next Sunday for my best summer. It's going to be phenomenal. Remember, we're breaking from the Gospel of John and we're going into something we're calling my best summer because I want this summer to be the best summer spiritually that you've ever had. Now, I know you want to go on vacation and all that, but spiritually, I want this summer to be your best summer, and I'm believing God that it is. Listen, I want to see you every Sunday, except for the last Sunday in the month in July, where we'll do our outreach at 1030 a.m. Uh, every other Sunday. God bless you. Let's continue. Hey, everybody. This is Reese Alexander, and I serve on the Marriage and Family Team Ministry, and I am here this week to give you our purposeful principle. Now, you know we have been studying the book of John as a church, and I have to tell you, I'm a little bit of a Bible study nerd, so I got really excited when I heard that we were going to study the book of John, and here's why. If you've ever read the book of John, you will see that he often refers to himself as the disciple that Jesus loves. And I was like, so John, do you think that Jesus didn't love anybody else but you? It's like John thought that he was Jesus's favorite or something. At least that's what I was thinking. So I'm like, great, I'm gonna find out why. Now, again, I'm a bit of a Bible study nerd. So we have been in chapter one, but I read ahead. And in doing that, I really began to see why John might think that he was Jesus's favorite. What we see in the book of John is a very heartfelt account of who Jesus was compared to the other gospels where you get more of a historical account or it's more kind of almost clinical approach. But John is sharing personal accounts. He is giving us conversations that Jesus has. He shares miracles that are not accounted for in any other gospel. And when I saw that, I'm like, well, wait a minute. That means that John was close to Jesus. He was not just a regular disciple. He was close enough to know what Jesus said and who he said it to. And that helped me understand, well, sure, he thought that he was the one that Jesus loved. He would think that he was Jesus's favorite because Jesus was his favorite. It's clear if you read through the book of John that John had a very personal and intimate relationship with Jesus. And so I thought, well, what can I do? I want to be like John. I want to be Jesus's favorite. I want to be the one that Jesus loves. And so I thought about what did John do to have that close personal relationship with Jesus? And through studying the book of John, I came up with three things that I saw that John did that I think we can all learn from. So the first thing was that John spent time with the word. Now, as pastor taught us with the very first sermon, Jesus coming to earth was the word personified. But we have the Bible, which is the word transcribed. So if we want to be like John, we also need to spend time in the word, with the word. And through our time studying the word of God, we are actually getting to know Jesus because I don't know if you realize, but the entire Bible is about Jesus. Yes, both the Old and the New Testament is pointing us towards Jesus. And so the next thing that I saw that John did was that John had a very close relationship with Jesus. Back in the day of Jesus, there were lots of different people that followed around after Jesus. 
there were the multitudes, or as my husband says, those that came for a meal and a magic show, right? Just the people that were there just because they heard Jesus was going to be there. But Jesus was a rabbi. That means that he was a teacher. And so he had disciples. Those were the people that followed Jesus and learned from him. He was their teacher. And John was definitely one of the disciples. But we also see, if we look at some of the other gospels, that John had moved from just Jesus being his preacher and his teacher to the inner circle. We will see in other gospels that whenever something major happened for Jesus, like the transfiguration or the garden of Gethsemane, he always had three people that he kept close to him. Peter, James, and John. Now, the James is not the James that wrote the book of James. Scholars say that is actually Jesus's half brother. This James was John's brother. So we see that John had moved from just being a disciple and a follower to Jesus's inner circle. But I find it interesting that he never spelled that out specifically in his book. And I think that's because he said, I don't have to let you know how close I was to Jesus because Jesus knows. And that made me stop and ask myself, where do I fall? Am I in the multitude just following around after Jesus looking for a meal and a magic show like Jesus, what can you do for me? Am I just learning from Jesus? Am I all head knowledge when it comes to Jesus? Or do I have an intimate and personal relationship with Jesus like John did? And when I say intimate and personal, I want to take you to a verse in John 13. You see, I told you I, I read ahead. I just I'm a Bible nerd. All right. In John 13, 23, we see where it says that the disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. This is when they were at um, the Last Supper. And John was sitting next to Jesus. But we'll see that some other versions and scholars tell us that in the Greek, that word sitting next to actually meant that he was reclining on Jesus's bosom. Now, that's close. I've got a 10 year old son. Some of you who go to church with us, you've probably seen him. And sometimes he'll just come up and just put his head on my shoulder. Just to be close to me. That's the kind of closeness that John had with Jesus. And I had to ask myself, well, Jesus, do I have that kind of closeness with you? How can I make sure that you're not just my teacher, but you are also my friend? And there are two verses in the book of John that really um, show us that how we can make sure that we are Jesus's friend. In John 13, 34, here's what he said to us. So now I am giving you a commandment, love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And just so you all know, all the scriptures I'm reading, I use the NLT. So if your version didn't quite match, I was reading from the NLT. So for me to show Jesus that I'm your friend, I've got to love my fellow disciples, our fellow followers of Christ. That's a command that Jesus gave us. Also, if we go to John 15, 14 through 15, he said this, you are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the father has told me. So also, if I want to show that I'm Jesus's friend, I've got to do what he said. The last thing that we see John doing is we see that John is testifying about Jesus. When you look, the entire book of John is John's personal account and testimony about who Jesus was, the person of Jesus. And Jesus even tells the disciples in John 15, 27, 
and you must also testify about me because you have been with me from the beginning of my ministry. All right, now, I know what you're saying, Sharice, I have not been with Jesus since the beginning of his ministry. No, we haven't. But we still need to make sure that like John, we are telling people about Jesus and not just about the person of Jesus. And not, um, although that is important and not just what we read about Jesus or what we've studied about Jesus, although that's important as well. We need to testify to what our personal relationship with Jesus has done for us. How has it changed our life? I can tell you that when we look in the Bible, particularly in the book of John, everybody that had an encounter with Jesus walked away different. When he met the woman at the well, she was so taken by what he told her that she ran and told the people in her town, you have to come see a man. He has told me everything about me. You've got to see him for yourself. Or the, when he raised Lazarus from the dead and just all the people that were there that witnessed that, they went and spread the word about surely this must be the Messiah. Now, maybe we haven't seen miracles like that personally from Jesus, but I can tell you, that Jesus has certainly changed my life. If you would have met me back in college, y'all, let me tell you, I used to curse like a sailor. No, for real. Yes, Sister Reese did. I knew all the words. I don't cuss anymore. If I do, I'm repenting immediately because something really happened, right? How did I change? Jesus. I can tell you that if I would have had to plan out my life, I would not have gotten married at 37 and getting married later in life. I would not have said, okay, now we need to wait a few years before we have a child. I'm like, no, I'm 37. Come on, let's get to it. We need a baby. God said, no, you're going to become a mother at 41. Absolutely not what I would have planned, but Jesus's plan was better. And because I had learned to follow him, I've learned how to be okay with what he does because I know that his plan is better. And also another personal testimony of mine, y'all, is that I did not like to pray in front of people. No, I promise you. Just ask my husband, when we first got married, he would say, come on, baby, we're going to pray together. I start out and then you finish. And I would look at him and go, or you can just do the whole thing. And he would say, baby, it's just prayer. And I'm like, right, it's prayer. And in my head, I had made up all these things where I needed to say this thing or do this thing. But from my personal time in the word, from working to be, to get closer to Jesus by following his commands and by just loving on people. I've learned that prayer is just like the conversation that I'm having with you all right now. It's just a personal conversation, a way not to necessarily just ask Jesus or God for what we want, but to just spend time to love on God and tell him why we appreciate who he is and we can certainly ask for things as well, but I can tell you that my not being afraid to pray in front of people, it's nothing but Jesus. So if we want to be like John and really feel like we are God's favorite, we need to make sure that we are making Jesus our favorite by spending time in the word the transcribed word, because we don't have the advantage of the word personified. But like pastor told us a few weeks ago, you may not know the Bible, but you can know the word. So spend time in the word and then work to have a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. Show Jesus that you are his friend because you do what he commands and you love 
his people, even those people that may be a little hard to love. And then share your personal story. I've shared just a little bit of my story with you, and I'm now going to actually give you an example of how Jesus has changed me because I'm going to pray in front of all y'all. And you know that is nothing but Jesus. All right, so let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to come and learn more about you, to have a principle that we can use to help us grow closer to your son, Jesus. You sent him in the beginning. You sent him as the word and the word was God and the word was with God and he became flesh and walked on this earth. We believe that he is your son and because we believe, we also want to get to know him the same way that John did. So Father, give us a thirst and a hunger for being in the word. Let us want to study the word so that we can be changed. We say here at the city that we want to see lives changed through the gospel and the lives of changed people. So let us be that change. Let us go out and tell others, we met a man. Let us be like that woman at the well to say, I met a man that changed my whole vocabulary, took all the curse words out of it. I met a man that helped me be at peace with being what some people would call an advanced age mother. You also can tell your story. Father, help them to be bold and go out and share what you have done for them through your son, Jesus. Because in the end, we all know that you love us. But let us take some comfort in knowing that despite our mistakes, despite whatever it is that we may do to mess up because we will mess up and that's okay. But in the end, we can still say that we are the one, the son, the daughter whom Jesus loved. Yes, y'all, I'm Jesus's favorite, but so are you. What a powerful principle and prayer, and I'm not just saying that because she's my fine wife. Jesus really is the answer to everything we need. If you know you need Jesus and haven't invited him into your life as your Lord and Savior, right now is the best time to do it. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace. I'm a sinner and I know that I need Jesus in my life. I believe that he is the son of God raised from the dead. And I pray that you will help me to be the man or woman of God that I was created to be. In Jesus' name, amen. The city truly is a place where lives are being changed by the gospel and by the lives of changed people. I know because I'm one of them. If you'd like to partner with us, you can use any of the giving options listed below to help us continue spread the love of Jesus in Kansas City and all over the world. Now, go and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We love y'all.